The Public Accounts Committee of Parliament continued with its hearings on Wednesday and the Interior Ministry under which the Police Service, Fire Service as well as the Immigration Service Force appeared before the committee to answer questions uh, on infractions in the 2020 Auditor General's report. And as part of public uh, interest discussions, the Inspector General of Police, Dr. George Ekufudampari, clarified that there is no ban on prophecies but the mode of its communication. We are not against prophecies. We are talking about communication of such prophecies that will end up creating fear and panic in our society, which is unwarranted. And even there, if you have prophecies about somebody dying, you have even have a way in our typical ghanaian environment put it even in Proverbs for the person to decipher it. But I don't put fear and panic in the person, in the person's immediate family, in the person's extended family, in the whole country. We are deep-seated Christians that we don't joke with godliness. But we also will not allow anybody to use God to create a mess and confusion because God is not a God of confusion and God is not a God of disorderliness. If God speaks to you, and then you go out there, find, ask the same God to give you guidance as to how it should be communicated, that will not affect the life of individuals in a manner that will put them in fear, put their immediate family in fear, the extended family in fear, the country in fear. The Inspector General of Police also said seven persons have been arrested with 18 others identified for engaging in criminal activities on various e-commerce platforms. He indicated that the police is making all efforts to ensure that such criminal activities are clamped down. There were a couple of instances where people have been duped on e-commerce platform, e-commerce market platforms, because the investigation is long going, I don't want to mention names here, who have been duped. And as we speak, almost about 18 people have been identified, and out of the 18, seven people have been arrested. At times, some of these things, we, we, we try not to go out there immediately, but make sure that we, because it's a very extensive investigation. For the first time in the history of this country, you are going to hear a whole bunch of things about people who have been duped across the space of the internet. And we are dealing with them. So what we have to do going forward is to pick on all the others that you have and see what we can do to make sure that at the end of the day, we send the strongest signal to these people and tell them that if you have lived the fiscal space in terms of robbing people and duping people because of the measures we put in place across the country, and you want to go to the virtual space, we'll chase you there and deal with you according to law. Also appearing before the committee was the Ministry of Food and Agriculture and uh, officials of the ministry indicated that a rice processing firm, Tedman Company Limited in the Central Region, is indebted to the Crop Services Department of the ministry to the tune of 123,000 Ghana cities uh, since 2012 that it supplied a rice mill to the company. They said efforts made over the period towards retrieving the funds have proven unsuccessful. The committee indicated that it will invite the company over next week to ensure that they also provide some answers why they have not been able to make the payment. Sir, this is since 2012. We are in 2023. And you haven't been able to recover this amount? And you are telling us you are thinking about referring it to the Attorney General? How many decades do you need to recover this amount? Mr. Chairman, the total amount was 127, out of which the company has only paid uh, 4,000. And we are saying after all this series of communication, there has still not been payment. And being a transaction which is of a commercial nature, it is the Attorney General that will be a better place to advise us on the, uh, the next line of action. The Tetment Company Limited is located in Asimpraso, the central region. 
and is this still operating? Yes. And you gave them a rice mill since 2012, and they owe 123,000, and they haven't paid it. Uh, uh, please, from my records, the rice mill started operating in 2017. Your answer that a machine allocated in 2020, 2012 was put in use in 2017, suggesting that he ought not to pay for the period that he didn't use the machine, is, is an answer that shouldn't come from you. It's, it's in bad taste. The signal you are sending is bad. For that company not paying, there might be some reason. So, we, this committee is deciding that you will invite that com uh, company to appear before us, together with the Minister of Food and Agriculture. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. The Ministry of Roads and Highways also appeared before the committee and the sector minister, Kwesia Mwakwata, assured that the government is mobilizing funds to construct the Edramampong Highway, which is in a poor state and is alleged to have caused the death of some three persons. As we speak now, you know, by Tuesday, God willing, I am moving to uh, Mampong. I'm sure some of you are aware, and the MP for Mampong, uh, uh, Honorable Amprachun, um, um, Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs, you know, is, 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 is in, 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 if I should put it, in hot soup, so, so far as his constituents are concerned. Because the people in, uh, is it Yeju or Ijua? No, the road. The road, yes. yes. Mampon Edra Road is cut off now. You know, so we are mobilizing money from everywhere you know, to go and rectify the situation. And I am planning to move there by Tuesday. Reporting from Parliament, my name is Ni Ayukwe Okain for City News.